Oh boy, what are we doing today? Hey, we are out in the country installing a radon system. That's what we do in this channel. My name is Scott. I'm a radon mitigator in Virginia. I make videos for other radon mitigators. Those who are looking to get into business. And if you're home, we're forced to stay and hang out. If you're looking for a radon mitigator, it's a good place for you to go. www.nrsb.org. It's right down here. That's the National Radon Safety Board. Just go to that site, plug in your zip code, and that'll pull up a list of certified radon professionals in your area. So today, um, this is a real estate transaction. I was called out to go way out into the country, like really far away and quote, just activate a passive radon system. So uh, if you're a mitigator, try to find out what those numbers are because the numbers I received were somewhere between 18 and 33 picocuries, which is horrible if there's a passive radon system in place, which means it ain't working. Uh, so um, I'm gonna show you a video of what I sent to the realtors in order to send to the sellers uh, to describe what we're up against. Hey, what's going on? This is Scott with Rapid Radon. I'm out here at um, Newport Road in Catawba. I've just activated the radon system and I came out here early because I was awfully curious. So with radon levels of, you know, 18, 33, um, for a home to have a passive radon system that's remotely working, uh, the radon level sh should not be that high. A, a good passive radon system uh, usually just barely fails the four pico curie test so um, anyway i went up into the attic i've installed a fan and so this is the radon pipe and our manometer is telling us that is not moving a lot of air um, so there's a variety of reasons for that um, when builders are building a house putting in passive radon systems are pretty low on their list of priorities a lot of balls are dropped there so we're probably not tapped into uh, the gravel underneath the slab of this home. Plus, it is a very long run with a lot of turns. There we are. That goes up to your attic. And there's a lot more turns in the attic because it's running back that way. Uh, so what I would propose is, so I'm scheduled to come out here Friday to actually do the job. And I'm glad I came out here because I now know that this is not going to cut it. So what I would suggest is we abandon the pipe there and turn and drop it and put our suction point right here. Uh, if the room's gonna be finished someday, it shouldn't be a big deal. A chase is gonna need to be built around uh, the septic clean out anyhow. So it'd be just another pipe with another chase. So I'm ready, willing, and able to do that for you Friday if you'd like me to. I just figured you would be interested in this update. Okay, thanks, bye. Okay, so we're back and I'll show you what we're doing to correct the problem. All right, so here's our old original passive radon system and we severed it right there and we labeled it here for folks in the future. So uh, we've got some new pipes connected here and a little trick that I like to do, especially when we're in tight circumstances, oh, let me grab this, is, um, you know, before I, glue, I dry fit them all, and then I make these little marks here to make sure everything jives when I do glue it. The folks anticipate, you know, finishing this room. So this is plumbed out to be a bathroom and naturally, um, you know, we don't want a bunch of other things going on when they do finish this, you know, like that's gonna be an air duct and this is gonna be, you know, maybe another light fixture, so on and so forth. So, uh, somebody's gonna have to, you know, a drywall person's gonna need to box this in, and therefore they're gonna need to box this in. So I wanna make sure everything is super cool here. You know, like, so they're gonna put a ceiling here, right? So I, I wanna make extra special sure, you know, that we're close, but not touching anything, right? And so same thing over here with that line. Super close, but not touching. Okay, so now uh, we're going to drill our, our new suction point. And this is my little trick. If you haven't seen my videos, uh, all that is is a piece of uh, plywood, uh, hole sawed uh, three and a half inches to fit inside of a three inch PVC fitting. All right, and so we run a plumb bob through that, dead center. That's what's working for me. Maybe that'll help you out. All right, now we'll drill our pilot hole. And we're about a foot off the wall. Um, that's what's been working for me as far as missing footers under there. 
Okay, so here's another little test that you're not gonna find in any kind of textbook uh, to see what you're getting ready to get into. This gives you a little bit of an edge of knowing if you're getting ready to drill into gravel. So what I do is I turn on the shot back and I can put it down here. And based on the sound of the shot back, I can kind of tell if we've got gravel. So if there, so, well, I'll just show you, right? If you're a mitigator and you want to practice this, you can tell when it gets when it goes it means it's not moving air. So it's it, it it adjusted a little bit, yes, but not to like well, you know, here's a good example. All right. Anyway, I've done this a couple of times. Maybe it'll help you guys out there uh, if you get in a pinch. Anyway, let me drill this hole. Okay, so even though it's a drag, um, you take care of your stuff, your stuff will take care of you. Um, have to take the filter out, go outside and brush it off with the broom because that rock dust, when we drill this initial hole right here, it'll clog these things in a hurry. And so it, it, this gravel is kind of heavy, so it's a strain on the shop back. So it, it, it might behoove you to go ahead and clean that thing out between drilling the hole and then sucking out the rock. I know it's gonna do me in this case, so just something to watch out for. And it sucks, stop what you're doing, take everything apart, go outside and do all that. But this is the most crucial part of the system. If we don't get good suction out of here, then oh, this is for nothing. This, is, this right here is where the rubber meets the road. There's a lot more rocks. Oh, yeah. All right, so that's a pretty good little load of gravel. Let's see how we did in there. So we'll get rid of this gravel and we will connect our pipe here to our suction point. Okay, so now we're going to simply uh, put in some backer rod around here and uh, I'll go ahead and get this tucked in and then seal it in with some good silicone. WD-40 to the rescue. Hey, look back. Heck yeah. Thank you, WD-40. These guns aren't cheap either. You'll be doing a lot of silicone work if you plan on getting in the uh, radon mitigation business. All right, we've got pipe in. Uh, we relocated our manometer from our old pipe. We're gonna fire up the system. We know all we gotta do is flip the breaker because we've got it labeled. Let's see how we're doing. Boom! 
considerably more airflow. So originally it was around two-ish. 0.5 means that we do not have a lot of resistance. We are moving a lot of air. So, so just for extra credit, what I'll probably do is run a bead of silicone down this crack right here. And it's not a crack. It, it was intentionally done by the folks that poured the concrete uh, in anticipation to prevent cracking. So um, I've gone ahead and I've shot backed it out. So I'll just run a bead of clear silicone through here just, uh, just for good measure. Okay, so I can hear suction loss back behind here. So here's our pipe. hear that? That's a bummer. All right, what are we gonna do about that? Hey, let's do this side too. Why not? Boy, that was fun. Let's never do that again. So apparently I was sweating the wrong crack here. Um, all of our suction loss coming from back there. So we've got all of this pulled out, cut out. And for this area with this, you know, styrofoam board, I'm gonna go ahead and run a little uh, bead of expanding foam back there. And then as we transcend over here, where the uh, this sort of stops, I'll go ahead and change that to uh, clear silicone, and let's let's get this <laughs> man. All right, let's get this thing going. Okay, so this is where we should hear the suction loss being cured. So you can hear it. Alright. Alright, this is driving me nuts. I know that I hear it back behind this wall. Can you guys hear it? Yeah, there, there's, there's still suction loss back there. Somehow. I mean acoustics will, will mess with you, but it, stuff like this will cause all this hard work to fail uh, if we don't dot these I's and cross these T's. So, um, maybe I missed a little bit right back in there. I'm, I'm gonna, I've, I've just cut some of this out. I'm trying not to, <laughs> you gotta keep it pretty somehow, some way. Um, we're doing the best we can, but I still hear it and it's driving me crazy. Okay. So we've got this thing about wrapped up here. And uh, so once we got past this styrofoam board, uh, we shifted to gray. I had uh, some gray silicone and that was working for me. But I think it looks tight. And we're gonna ignore this. I cleaned this crack out with a shop vac and it's solid. It's not going, um, it's not broken anywhere all the way through. So we're gonna leave that alone. We got, we got faked out really. <laughs> Um, our crack troubles were on the perimeter. I have had that be the difference between being under four Pico Curies or not being. Right here, uh, all that work gained this one lousy little click. We're at 0.6, but we're moving a heck of a lot of air. I don't hear anything over here anymore. So I'm stoked. One last thing. Um, this area is intended 
to be a bathroom. So that right there is gonna be a toilet, that right there is gonna be the sink and vanity, this right here would be the tub shower. Now, if you watch my videos, uh, we're always on the lookout for tub showers in basements because they basically break this open and do a bunch of plumbing here. So I've left a little love note to uh, the folks in the future. Uh, should this area be improved with a shower or tub shower, be sure to seal this hole with expanding foam or concrete or it will negatively affect your radon system. So uh, I hope they take that to heart. And I see, by the way, let's see, I brought, I, I capped these. Um, I could have sworn I heard a little action going on through here, but it can't hurt. These things are like $1.50 a piece. So good, good little investments right there. I, I'm gonna sleep a little better tonight. Got one up there to take care of him. And I believe that's a wrap. So hey, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, by all means, smash that like button and consider subscribing. I drop lots of content to the Radon community. Does it cost you a dime? It means the world to me. See you in the next video. Bye now. Thank <laughs> you.